thank you all very much. I'm uh, uh, Julie and I are sorry to keep you up uh, so late. Uh, this has been a very important day in the life of the nation, the government, and of course of our party. Uh, as you know, the party room a little while ago elected me as leader of the Liberal Party and re elected Julie as the deputy leader of the Liberal Party. I want to say at the outset what a great debt the nation owes, and the party owes, the government owes to Tony Abbott and, of course, to his family, Margie and their daughters. Uh, the, the burden of leadership is a very heavy one. Tony's discharged that, leader of the party and, of course, as Prime Minister, over many years now. And the achievements of the government that he has led have been formidable. The, the free trade agreements that uh, have been negotiated represent some of the key foundations of our future prosperity, which I'll talk about in a moment. And of course, restoring the security on our borders has been an extraordinarily important step, enabling us, for example, to offer the uh, increased and generous uh, arrangements for Syrian refugees last week. So I want to thank Tony uh, very much indeed for that. Can I just say briefly, as I said, the hour is late, and I want Julie, I want Julie to be able to say some, something to you as well. This has been a very important, sobering experience today. I'm very humbled by it. I'm very humbled by the great honour and responsibility that has been uh, given to me today. We need to have, in this country, and we will have now, an economic vision, a leadership that explains the great challenges and opportunities that we face, describes the way in which we can handle those challenges, seize those opportunities, and does so in a manner that the Australian people understand, so that we are seeking to persuade rather than seeking to lecture. This will be a thoroughly liberal government. It will be a thoroughly liberal government committed to freedom, the individual and the market. It will be focused on ensuring that in the years ahead, as the world becomes more and more competitive, and greater opportunities arise, we are able to take advantage of that. The Australia of the future has to be a nation that is agile, that is innovative, that is creative. We cannot be defensive, we cannot future-proof ourselves. We have to recognise that the disruption that we see driven by technology, the volatility and change, is our friend is our friend if we are agile and smart enough to take advantage of it. There has never been a more exciting time to be alive than today. And there has never been a more exciting time to be an Australian. We will ensure that all Australians understand that their government recognises the opportunities of the future and is putting in place the policies and the plans to enable them to take advantage of it. Now, Julie. Thank you, and I realise the hour is late. First, I want to congratulate my very dear friend of many years, Malcolm Turnbull, on being voted in as the leader of the Liberal Party. That means he will become the Prime Minister of this country, and I'm confident that he has the passion, the energy and the vision to lead this country at this very challenging time. I thank Tony Abbott for his service as the leader of our party and particularly for the effort that he put in at the 2013 election when the Australian people knew they could not afford another moment under the Rudd-Gillard-Rudd government. It's a great honour to be elected as the deputy of this party again. I have served as a deputy for eight years. And I have also, for the last two years, had the honour of being Australia's Foreign Minister. I'm excited about continuing to serve as the Deputy under Malcolm Turnbull's leadership, and I am thrilled at the prospect of continuing to serve the Australian people as the Foreign Minister. 
I came into the Liberal Party and came into Parliament because I believed in the values of the Liberal Party, because I believe that they provide the most hope for the most people in this country. And as a believer in the Liberal Party that was created by Robert Menzies, I am firmly of the view that the values and beliefs of the Liberal Party are as relevant today as they were when this great party was formed 70 years ago. In Markham Turnbull, we have a leader who will be true to those Menzian values and beliefs, and I'll be honoured to serve this party and this country in my current Mr. role. Turnbull. Yeah, yeah, we'll just take a couple of questions because it's so like Mr. Curry. Uh, Mr. Turnbull, well, no, I know it's early days, but is it your intention to serve the full <laughs> term, or do you think there'll be a need to go to an early election to receive your own mandate, um, your own mandate as Prime Minister from the people? You, you, my assumption is that the uh, Parliament will serve its full term. Mr. Sorry, Mr. Mr. Not, yeah. Who will your treasurer be, and do you envisage changes to policy substance as well as leadership style? There will be inevitably uh, there will be well there will be changes to in ministerial arrangements. Uh, I'll be meeting with the uh, ministry tomorrow morning. Uh, the I expect minister well. Ministers will continue in their current position, unless, of course, they choose not to, for the balance of the week, and we'll make uh, ministerial uh, changes uh, after the parliamentary sitting week is over. Now, hang on, hang on, hang on. Just, 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 just let me finish. Just let me finish. Um, the, as far as uh, policy changes are concerned, let me just say this. This is, this. It's not a question of leadership style. Nothing. Well. There are few things more important in any organisation than its culture. The culture of our leadership is going to be one that is thoroughly consultative. A traditional, thoroughly traditional cabinet government that, 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 that ensures that we make decisions in a collaborative manner. The Prime Minister of Australia is not a president. The Prime Minister is the first among equals. And that, and you can see the partnership between me and Julie, the partnership with our colleagues, will be a very clear cultural demonstration that we are operating in a traditional cabinet manner. And that means, Lenore, that I'm not going to make uh, policy pronouncements from this podium tonight. Of course, policies change. They change all the time. Uh, but they will be when people will have, should have the confidence that we will be making decisions in a thoughtful and considered manner, recognising the significance of the work we have to do as the government of Australia. Sorry, now, please. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yes. Yeah. There are only 10 votes in it in the end. There are obviously some in the party that still have reservations about your leadership. How do you change? And what do you say to reassure those people? Well, the the uh, the challenge for any leader. So I can't now. I can't see you. There's a there's a photographer in front. Hello, you're still there. The challenge for for uh, any leader and every leader is to ensure that he or she brings together uh, and and brings together in the case of the Liberal Party the broad church of the Liberal Party. Uh, the Liberal Party is the largest, most diverse <coughs> grassroots political organisation in Australia. Our party room is remarkably diverse, both in terms of people's life experience, their occupa former occupations, and their views on many issues. It is, this is why a culture of engagement, of consultation, of collaboration is so absolutely critical. That is what a, that is how cabinet governments and parliamentary systems are meant to operate. And Julie and I are determined to ensure that going forward that's how we will operate. Now, now we're just going to take one more. No, perhaps you. Oh the, oh, the West Australian. There you go. Right. There you go. Right. Well, well, I've got to look after the deputy leader. <laughs> Uh, hang on. Can we just can, can you guys just let us see Mr. Private? He's a, he's a familiar face, but it's nice to 
talk to him rather than a lens. Can I just ask on a couple of the policy, uh, key mm. policy questions? Mm. On gay marriage, what, how will you progress that one? And secondly, on climate change, two of the key uh, doubts, if, uh, if, you, if you will, of your... Uh... Well, well, let me... I mean, these... Let me make this clear. The, uh, the policy on uh, climate change that uh, Greg Hunt and Julie, uh, in fact, prepared uh, is one that I supported as a minister in the Abbott government and it's one that I uh, support today. So the, I don't... Uh, I mean, again, just going back to what Lenore said, of policies are, are reviewed and adapted all the time, but, uh, but the, the climate policy is one that is, I, I think has has been very well designed. That was a very, that was a very, very good piece of work. And can I just say, we have, we yeah. have already, we've already Sorry. announced, we've already announced our climate targets for Paris in uh, December, and I expect those targets to continue. What, what, what do you say to Australia? It might be very confused about what's happened here tonight. Well, well, this is look, uh, this is a, we, we are a parliamentary system. You know, we are a, uh, a Westminster system. Uh, or Washminster, some people, some political scientists call us. But we're a parliamentary system. And so the, the leader of any parliamentary party remains leader only so long as he or she has the confidence of the party room. Uh, the, uh, as John Howard always used to say, the leader serves uh, at the pleasure of the party room. And so when the party room makes changes of their mind about that, when they make a, a judgment such as they've done today, then the leadership can change. And that is inherent... That's one of the characteristics of a parliamentary system, one of, its, uh, one of the flexibilities uh, that it has over, over other systems. <laughs> now, just, well, just, can I just really take one more? Fran, there you are. In the, the... You tempted to ask me to come on the program in the morning, but I'll yeah. do that later. But um, you talked a lot about the economic vision, the economic mm. challenges. Joe Hockey was, took a little offence at that, said you were wrong. Are you talking about the fact that the economic directions were incorrect or just the capacity to have the conversation and explain it to the people? Are you going to change economic direction or are you going to change the way you tell the story? Well, the, Fran, let me, let me put this to you. The, in terms of talking about the economy, uh, talking about business, a key element is confidence. And you build confidence by explaining, as I said earlier, explaining what the problem is, uh, making sure people understand it, and then setting out the options for dealing with it. And you've seen in my own portfolio of the of the uh, of communications, where I've had to deal with very big, very big business problems, whether it's with NBN or indeed with Australia Post. That's the approach I've taken: laying out, laying out what the issues are, getting the facts straight, explaining that, and then presenting a path forward and making making the case for that path path forward. I, uh, my firm belief is that to be a successful leader in 2015, perhaps at any time, you have to be able to bring people with you by respecting their intelligence in the manner you explain things. Now, you know, if you look, I, we've got some great leaders in Australia at state level, uh, but let me just point to one international leader, John Key, for example. John Key has been able to achieve very significant economic reforms in New Zealand by doing just that, by, you know, by, by taking up, explaining complex issues and then making the case for them. And I, that, that is certainly something that I believe we should do. And Julie and I both, as retired advocates, um, in, our, in our own way, are very keen to do that again. Now, the hour is very late. Everyone should go to bed. Thank you very much indeed. Cheerio.